everyone. Welcome. This is the second hour of Peace News Now. It's a very special live episode broadcasting from Rogers <laughs> Campground in Lancaster, New Hampshire. There's a live studio audience out here, and it's especially unique because last year when I broadcast from this location, I forgot to hit the record button. And that episode is gone forever. So this this is especially unique, and it's good to be with Nicole and Dan, who are our guests in this segment. Dan had a couple follow-up questions that he wanted to ask, and then I'm going to open up the third chair to anyone in the studio audience who has some commentary they'd like to share, either on the topic or about their own peaceful resistance. So Dan, fire away. So uh, the, the next, uh, I guess, couple things I wanted to bring up was, were that you were talking about the question of um, so I'm not a uh, asshole. I equality me. between men and women as far as toplessness, and then using the term top freedom, which I understand in a certain context is, is I would say, is a legitimate term. But uh, in as much as this is a libertarian uh, talk show, I think it, you should be careful what? to not conflate issues because this sort of freedom, uh, I think, where, where top, toplessness freedom comes in is a, a freedom in social standards. Uh, it's, not, it's not a freedom of um, uh, force to, you know, present myself however I want, because if you wanted to go by that principle, you know, then you should ask, well, can I walk down, walk down the street completely naked? Can I, can I, you know, have sex in public? Is this... Um, Am I, am I hurting anybody by doing this? You don't have to look. You know, at, at, at a certain point, um, I don't. Maybe, maybe, maybe you're okay with that too. I don't know. Uh, Are you okay with that? I, I would have. I would make you a bit uncomfortable. <laughs> I mean, it, I mean, well, what force would you be willing dick. to either impose yourself or authorize others to impose? Okay. So well, we'll stop it from happening. At Rogers Campground, I would. I would. Um, I, I would. I would be understanding. I mean, I would. What I would personally do is I'd probably just walk away. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not a very conscious Doesn't that sound like an easier solution? It, it, it does. Than but whining like a baby? Outrageous. There's a certain part. I, I would walk away with the understanding that someone else who is kind of a proprietor might take it, take care of it. And, I mean, if this was if this was a perfect completely pri uh, public area, I would walk away and just, okay, figure it okay, they, They've homesteaded this area <laughs> for their own purposes, and we'll, I'll move around, I'll move away. But, I mean, here it's a little different because these aren't, you know, public alleyways. Uh, the public alleyways that are Rogers Campground, and and um, and uh, I guess the corollary is like you, you bring up the question of you know does it does it hurt the children to see one thing or another thing? And again, that's sort of a, that's that's a nuanced question that's up to judgment. It's not up to liber not up to like property rights or libertarian principles. And it's great that you're talking about it as long as you recognize that this is a kind of a, a separate issue. Well, the way it's being described, it sounds a lot like a win-lose situation to me, and I think that's why I have such a hard time with it rubs me the wrong way. I, I, well, how do you think we can turn this into a win-win situation? Is it possible, or is it uh, strictly a win-lose? You know, I'm unhappy with the way you, you're looking. Perhaps uh, I don't like that you wear a purple shirt, and I'm just going to have to be unhappy about that. That's a win-lose situation, right? Yeah, I mean... It... Is there a way that we can bridge that gap, communicate, uh, extend an olive branch? Is there some way to make a win-win situation out of it? Um, Nicole, what do you think? Is, is there yeah. anything that would make it right to you? I'm really not sure. It's... Or make you feel like you've won? And the, the person uh, who's offended has won? I think I have to think on that for a while. I... I'm not really sure, to be honest. I wish I had a better answer. Well, while we're thinking about that, I'd, I'd like to uh, invite our next guest, Rob, to join us. Uh, Rob does work with the Journalistic Revolution, and he's working on a documentary project while he's here at Pork Fest. So go ahead and put your headphones on. Uh, don't be afraid to get real close to that mic, Rob, and uh, tell us your thoughts on the topic at hand and also what you're doing here at Pork Fest. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll attack the last one first and the first one last. Uh, what I'm doing here at Porkfest is we, we're also broadcasting live over there, uh, down there, uh, but we're uncensored, not in, not in uh, competition with LRN. Um, you know, so we're down there trying to get more of a feel that other people hear outside of Porkfest how these individuals are uh, experiencing what's going on now. 
Um, and then we're also filming WordPress The Experience, which is we're giving everybody a chance to get in front of a camera or, or, or speak to us or interview with us to give their ideas and feelings about their experience. Is it your first time? Is it your second time? What's the difference from the first to the second? If this is your first, what expectations have you had that have been met? And I want people to be honest so that we can, this, this documentary, it's, a, it's not going to be for us here, all of us who are awake and already arrived to PortFest. But I, it's going to be for those who don't even give a crap that PortFest would exist. But they can watch it and they can feel like they've gone there. And they can actually objectively look at it and say, well, you know, that, that's not that bad. You know, and hopefully wake them up later in the future. This is your first pork fest? It is my first pork fest. First impressions? First impressions. It's it's everything I expected, and then just a little bit more. Yeah, Nicole, and, uh, how, which pork fest is this? What number of pork fest is this for you? Oh, this is my second. Last year was my first. But to attack your, uh, uh, your first question, um, what's my feelings on this? I was there when this took place. And I, I'll, I'll admit, the people that came to her handled it respectfully. I'll, I'll give them that. They, they didn't make any demands. They said we, it would be really nice. But at the same so time... So it wasn't a demand, to be clear. I think to be important. clear, because I, I even said afterwards, I was all like, well, she said, please, maybe we you should have said no. But at the same Nicole, time, you don't think that way when it's happening. Nicole, did you feel like this was a request or a demand? Uh, it felt more of a demand. It may have been worded kind of leaning in the middle, I guess. Um, but yeah, the I think it was a um, cover up the request that if she would have said no, it would have been a demand. Well, Sounds like it was a strongly worded suggestion. <laughs> Just leave it at that. Quote unquote. <laughs> uh, I, I'll accept it. You'll accept it. Yeah. Okay. Well, then, but I want to show my support because I've been talking to her about this for the last two days. You know, to Nicole? Yeah. To Nicole, yes. And, um, you know, and, I, and I've been supporting her, and like, I was like, you know, you should really bring this to people's attention. Um, so I'm going to offer, if this is a property rights issue, I have rented and homesteaded uh, three lots over there. And I am offering anybody who wants to walk around shirtless in my shop or near me to come on down and do so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I don't, it doesn't matter your sex or gender. Um, We're actually all topless right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can give up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's, <laughs> see, that's the assumption, though, Rob. You know, immediately you make a sexual joke, right? Because it's sexualized. Do mm -hmm. you think wrongfully so, Nicole? Yeah. It's, that it's, it's yeah. sexualized to be topless? As a woman. And, yeah. and people always say that, you know, like it or not, breasts are more sexualized. And it's like, well, it depends on who you talk to. You know, there's a lot of people who will also sexualize men's chest and find that incredibly attractive. As I and, just did. Right. <laughs> so are you for full nudity equality? Would you say that uh, in your utopia, people would be walking around completely naked? There would be no restrictions? If they want to. Yeah. Do you Good think answer. that's the kind of environment you'd like to see at Fest? I, yeah, I mean, I personally, I have nothing against that. I saw a discussion about that. Um, Actually, uh, now that I think of it, I think, um, I think I was told, you know, there's not really like um, an adult section set up at Pork Fest. There's a kid section though, isn't there? I, I think, yeah, when I made the reservations, um, they kind of said that there were certain sites that they were reserving more for families and, and you know, people with kids and that sort of thing. They were kind of being prioritized in a certain area and the playground with that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I was told that there's, there's no adult place, and uh, so this is apparently seen as an adult issue for a woman to be like this, but not, not a man. All the men who wanted to be shirtless that day, there were many, they were all free to do as they pleased. Question for Rob. Does he even have the authority to offer his campsite for others to bare their chests? Or is Rogers Campground the final arbiter of that decision? I would have to say ultimately it would be Rogers because they're the ones who are in a contract with me to have this. Um, so I would say I would have to say Rogers would be ultimately the decision maker. More questions about property rights when Peace News Now returns. <laughs>